As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. At this week, it is episode 228, and I continue to plug away at the infamous backlog from hell, and I tackle another one of our world-renowned sponsored episodes where a listener of the show has generously sponsored an episode, skipped the Democratic BS here at Remember the Game headquarters, and said, hey, dipshit play this and the game that this dipshit had to play this time was the beloved hack and slash beat em up castle crashers i remember when this game launched back on the xbox 360 and it was fucking everywhere people were talking about it it was all over xbox marketplace ign and those sites had it everywhere and i never played it and despite really really wanting to because i didn't have any friends at the played games like this anyway so I never had anyone to play it with but I've always been interested in it I've been fascinated by its art style because I think it looks fucking gorgeous and longtime hot dog Holmes finally said enough is enough Adam play this fucking game and I've been playing it for about a month now and I gotta say yeah pretty 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 damn solid uh, if you've never played it you can team up with up to three friends you pick a little block headed looking night guy or one of a ton of other characters uh and you just get hacking and slashing and in some ways it's just a standard beat up but between having 30 plus characters to level up however you want the different loadouts you can take into the games the phenomenal art style and the humor the multiplayer content it just doesn't get old like a lot of other beat ups and hack and slash type games do you know uh at some point i don't remember when but at some point during this episode, I list my top three beat em ups ever, and uh, Castle Crashers slides onto that list ahead of a game that might surprise some people. I like this game that much. So Holmes and I had a chat about this stupid game and why he loves it so much, and then my buddy Tyler makes his triumphant return to the show to give me a history lesson on Newgrounds, and we talk even more Castle Crashers, and this was just an all-around super positive and fun episode. And we'll get there in just a minute, because speaking of fun and super positive, it's time for another edition of the Remember Remember the game infamous intro. Dun, 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 dun.
And if you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Consider this your warning. Your intros are kind of long, but they're fun. And they're not nearly as tedious as the fucking ice bosses in Castle Crashers. Uh, but seriously, though, if you do want to skip it, go about 30 minutes up the road and you'll be past the intro and you'll be right into the Castle Crashers uh, content. We got a really bad review today from somebody that was like, ah, oh, this guy talks for too long before he gets into the video games. And it's like every time in the first three minutes, I tell you to skip half an hour if it's all you want. But I, whatever. We get like so many more nice reviews. We get 15 or 20 five star reviews to every one person that's like i hate the intro so uh haters gonna hate we're not changing a goddamn thing the infamous intro grows stronger on the hate but anyway uh the intro is fun we talk about video games and all that shit like give it a chance if you never listen to it give it a shot it's a good time i do have to do my plugs though this is how i uh keep the bills on as we've started saying around here we have merchandise hoodies t-shirts coffee mugs posters all kinds of stuff rocking incredible art drawn by my man joe from 4545creative.com you can find all of our merchandise at rememberthegamepodcast.com if you're interested it's a phenomenal way to support the little guy and support the show and of course if you're like i don't do close uh, you can always just support us on Patreon. It's about the best deal in the history of the world. For only two bucks a month, you get two additional podcasts every week. Or for five bucks a month, you get three additional podcasts every week. But I usually plug the two. Uh, you get exclusive access to my gaming news podcast, Game Patch, each and every Friday, where I look at all the biggest news in modern video games. I add, in my opinion, some sales picks and you know, sprinkle some profanity on top and all that good stuff. And Expansion Pass goes live every Thursday, and that's a different podcast every week. We do game rankings, console rankings, we look back at characters, genres, consoles, we do comedy episodes, there's a ton of spoiler-free modern game reviews in there. It's a, it's a potpourri of goodness. Uh, and this past week on Expansion Pass, it was one of my world-renowned ranking episodes, and I decided to rank some of my favorite things in this world, you. The listeners. I ranked my 10 favorite listeners. No, I did not do that. I ranked, because you know what? It would be most of you would tie for first and three of you would tie for last. And the three of you fucking know who you are. Uh, I actually ranked indie games on Expansion Pass this past week. I love indie games. And I figured with the holiday break right around the corner, it'd be a good time to count down some of my favorites and maybe give listeners some ideas on a new game to play if you're looking for one to pick up on the cheap. And as is becoming tradition during the intro, here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of Expansion Pass, my top 10 indie games. At number 11, the indie game that just missed out on my top 10 as much as I love it is Hades. And so many of you wrote in about Hades, and I understand. Hades is phenomenal. It just There's 10 I like better. Victor from Regina wrote in and said, Hades. It's one of my all-time favorites, and it left me vibrating with enthusiasm after almost every play session. An absolutely incredible soundtrack and art style matched with tight, addictive gameplay. It's just as impressive as a piece of art as it is an enjoyable game. I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, Hades is... Mwah. It is so fucking good. I'm sorry I couldn't make the top 10. And just to give you an idea, games like Dead Cells, Inside, Limbo, Guacamelee, the Steam World games, they didn't even crack the top 15. And I like all them too. That just shows you how deep this list of indie games that I love is. It's fucking wild. So those are all the ones that didn't make my top 10. Let's talk about the ones that did. My 10th favorite indie game of all time. So that's now available on our archives. And this week for Expansion Pass 142, it's Festivus. It means I got a lot of problems with you people. And now you're going to hear about them. I'm not even going to say shout out to anyone who gets that reference. You should all get that reference and know what Festivus is. It is our third annual airing of Gaming Grievances episode. I'll get some shit off my chest. So will some of our Patreons. We'll just vent. This is always one of our more popular episodes. So that'll be going live tomorrow. For all of our patrons. Again, two bucks. Get you two extra shows every single week. Instant access to 250 plus archived episodes. All ad free. Just waiting for you whenever you want. Plus, you can join our Remember the Game Discord. You get a chance to vote in our Patreon poll every month. You get the ability to submit comments to be read on all of our shows. You can DM with me and I actually check them on like Twitter and Instagram. And and I don't want to say, like I don't hate on people on Twitter and Instagram. I just get too much spam on there. It fucking drives me crazy. And you get a shout out right here in the intro and get to hear me mispronounce your name like I'm about to do to most of these people. A huge thank you to our newest patrons, Ryan Maurice, Chris2105, Major Tom02, Colby Barnes, Casey Long, Asherly, French J Toast, Dalton Darling, Model of Vu, Model of Foo, Model of Foo23. Not sure how to if I said that one right. J Rodimus Prime, Ombre de Queso, Thin Fingers, David Henderson, Mellow Yellow 8787, Johan Stevel Stevel Bautista. The Scotty C. Brian Hired Goons, who? CJ3210, Brandon Helmheckel, 
Chase Ackerman, that boy Dario, Rambo dude, Super Garbage Day, Kaiser Nichols, and PBR Jax. If I fucked up your name, it's a badge of honor. Wear it as such. Thank you so much for the support and welcome to Remember the Game Industries. Patreon.com slash Remember the Game if you're interested. And you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Remember the Game whenever I feel like getting on there. No real schedule. So there you go. That's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our Patreons, usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment Blowing in the Cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. And let's blow. Our first blower this week is Hega Waffle, who wrote in about the infamous intro and said uh, a little chicken or the egg question about the secret sauce of the infamous intro. Do you write the speaking of blank? It's time for the infamous intro joke before you write the opening comments or afterwards. I'm just wondering how the sausage is made. So if you don't know, and I'm sure most of you do, uh, pretty well every week, I'll say my guests and I are going to do something. Like this week, I said this was just an all-around super positive and fun episode. And we'll get there in just a minute because speaking of fun and super positive. And almost every week, I do a tie-in like that leading into the infamous intro. So to answer your question, Hegelwaffle, I actually write the other part first. And then I just pick out the last few words and tie it into speaking of something and something for the infamous intro. I write the other part first, and then I just pluck some of the sausage out. And use it to queue up the infamous intro. So now you know the secret. There's no reason to even listen anymore. Now you know how the sausage is made. Thank you for writing in. Stoop Kid 90 wrote in and said, Hi, Mr. Blank. One of my favorite games on the PS1 was Tekken 2. And at release, the PS1 controllers didn't have an analog stick, so you were forced to use the D-pad. 20 plus years later, Tekken 8 is set to release. And it made me realize when I play new fighting games, I still only use the D-pad and never the analog stick. I know that's probably silly, but it's an old habit I can't seem to break. What are some old gaming habits that you can't seem to break? Uh, well, let me just say, first of all, as someone that doesn't play a lot of fighting games, it still sounds fucking insane to me that you would play a fighting game with a D-pad. I'm not judging because I just, I assure you'd fucking destroy me, but that just seems like I guarantee you there are fighting game players losing their fucking minds right now. Uh, I have a few habits that I haven't been able to break. I still have game rage. I have bad. I don't throw my controllers much anymore because they're, they've gotten too expensive. They're not as durable as the NES was. But um, I still get really mad at games, and I hate that I get so mad. Uh, you know what's a huge habit for me is multiple save files. Even when the game has automatic saves, I still will manually save, and I'll keep multiple manual save files, and I will save over and over. I'll go in and manually save, and then I'll, I'll probably do it again just to be sure. I'm like, did I just save or not? I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that. And you know what? When I was playing Final Fantasy Tactics, I won't spoil anything, but anyone that's played this game, you probably know what part I'm talking about. Multiple saves save my fucking ass. So never break that habit. Keep multiple saves. Don't count on the game's one save for you. Keep multiple saves of your own. So those are two habits I've got. Uh, I refuse to use my items like a donkey when I play through an RPG or something. I'll be just getting died. Oh, I'll die over and over and over. And I refuse to use my elixirs and stuff because I'm like, I might need them later. Even though I'm at like the final boss of the fucking game. And uh, I hold the Nintendo 64 controller on. And before you write in and say, that's why I hate it, I I'm going to say no. There should never be a way to hold a fucking controller wrong. So that's why I hate that controller. But I hold it from the outside to use the analog stick. I can't hold the middle. It's too tight. I don't... I don't care for that. So those are just some of my bad habits. So I can't believe you play fighting games with a D-pad. That's insanity to me. Uh, good job. Good stuff, stupid kid. Good job. Thomas Bridgeforth. Bridgeforth, pardon me, wrote in and said, Hey, man, weird question. Maybe you've already talked about it on some platform. But have you weighed in on the burritos versus sandwiches debate? I did not know there was a burritos versus sandwiches debate. I go on Reddit and look at the news almost every day. And I know people are talking about SPF and the FTX collapse. I know that people are talking about Elon Musk and Twitter. I had no idea that sandwiches versus burritos was a debate. But if I have to choose while I enjoy both, I'm going to side with sandwiches. Because while a bad sandwich is a fucking travesty, a good sandwich is untouchable. And as much as I like a good burrito, um, I... I can't give up my precious sandwiches. So if we're just debating what's better, I'm siding with Team Sandwich. Uh, I, I know that was a thing. Uh, Clayton Robertson wrote in and said, Hey, bro, I had a question. Super, super serious. If the <laughs> as, as soon as you say that this question is going to be super, super serious, I have no doubt that it is not going to be serious. Uh, Clayton says, If there was a video game villain that was going to try and chase you and kill you for 24 hours, and if you survive and live, you get $10 million dollars, who would you be most terrified of having chase you? Uh, you know what? I don't think I had to think about this very long. I'm going to go with Mr. X 
from Resident Evil 2 because not only does he scare the living shit out of me, but he kills me a lot. So I, uh, I'd have no chance. I'd be so fucked. It's not even funny. And just the idea of like thinking I have a safe hiding place and then hearing that fucking. Oh God. Ah, ah. Fuck Mr. X. That's that's the answer. And there is no... Oh, or maybe the guy from Outlast. The bad guy from Outlast. He'd be scary too. Although, I don't think he'd be as scary if I could just not hang out in the dirty, dank, dark basement of a, um old mental hospital and I could just like go to the mall. I don't feel like he'd be quite as scary. So I'm going to side with Mr. X, I think. Uh, thanks for the question, Clayton. Donnie the Dude Walter wrote in and said, Andy, I have decided to pull the trigger and modify my Steam Deck to allow me to emulate. I've already made a list of ROMs I want to grab. I would like a true retro gaming expert's opinion, though. What is one game for each of the following systems you would recommend? NES, SNES, PS1, PS2, and GBA. Now, here's the thing. I don't like to... I have made my stance on emulation abundantly clear, okay? I get asked about emulation a lot. I don't often read them here in the intro. I'm not going to tell you how to emulate and how to uh, hack things. It's pretty easy to find on the internet, and I don't know legally what I'm allowed to say and not... Yeah, like I'm probably already breaking the rules. So I don't even know. So for the record, I'm going to recommend games. But, oh, and my other stance when it comes to emulation is if a game is available from the rights holder at a reasonable uh, ask, I will buy it. Like if I could buy a game on Xbox Marketplace or the PSN or on my Switch or something um, and give that money to whoever owns the game and then play it for the show, I will. The only time I emulate are games that the only other option to get my hands on them is to go to the flea market and pay some grease bag $700 to get a copy. So uh, just for the record, the rec games I'm going to recommend to you are going to be games that are not just readily available to the best of my knowledge that you're going to have to to emulate to get your hands on all right just for the just so i'm just putting that out there just for the record so on the nes obviously you're gonna have all your big heavy hitters and everything like that um i'm gonna go with oh boy i, I would have said turtles but those are all available now you know what i don't care i know it's not gonna be a popular take but uh i feel like most of the good nes games are available on somewhere either on the switch online or in collections like the classic or the contra collection the castlevania collection the Mega Man collection etc so maybe not a popular take but i am gonna go with bart versus the space mutants because you can get all the other ones you should have all the other big you know known nes games and bart versus the space mutants is my guilty pleasure game i love that stupid game even though it sucks i love that fucking game or 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 tecmo wrestling if you're a wrestling fan, go with Tecmo Wrestling. On the SNES, oh, Jesus. Because, again, most of the big games are fucking readily available. Ah, you know what? You know what? I don't, I never, I'm going to break my rule because technically this game is available if you want to buy it through uh, the PSN on the PS3. I'm going to go with Chrono Trigger. Because fuck them. I don't even like that game that much, but I know everybody does. And for some fucking reason, they refuse to re-release it. So fuck them. Chrono Trigger. Uh, on the PS1, uh, I'll go with... Mm... You know what? I'll go with Medieval. That's a good fucking game. I like Medieval. I'll go with that game. Uh, on the PS2... Oh, Christ. Uh, oh, dude. Actually, no. I know the answer to that one. On the PS2, I'm going with Spider-Man 2, the movie game. It is fucking awesome. Awesome. Or Spider-Man, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Either of those. Ultimate Spider-Man or Spider-Man 2. And then you ask GBA. Unfortunately, I just have no knowledge. Oh, Metroid Fusion. Because I don't think Nintendo's made that available anywhere. I don't know fuck all about the GBA. But I'll go with Metroid Fusion because that game fucking slaps. So I hope that helps, Donnie. Good luck and congratulations on your uh, steam deck. i actually just bought a steam deck um i just literally as i'm recording steam just sent me an email hello i'm not going to say what my steam username is we're preparing your item to ship tracking information has been created and is attached below blah 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 blah. so i have a steam deck coming and before you all ask i'm not interested in using it for emulation at least not now i just want to have a way to play a couple of big games portably so i decided to treat myself after a busy com comedy corporate season and buy myself a steam deck so i guess i'm a half pc i'm like a pc master race light now PC Junior Master Racer. Uh, anyway, Matt McLean wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, I don't know if you've ever answered this before, but when you first started to remember the game, how did you pitch it to your friends to get them to come on the show? I believe Chris was your first guest. What was the conversation you had to ask him or any other guest on the show? You know what's cool about it, Matt, is uh, most of, not everybody, like Chris, yeah, he was my buddy, my guest on the very first episode. Uh, he's not a comedian, but most of my regular guests are. Not all, but most of them are. And so comedians are just, 
horny to have a microphone near their mouths all the time. So it's very easy to get a comedian to come on a podcast. You just say, hey, would you like to talk? And they're like, fuck yeah, I'll talk. Um, but when it came to Chris, um, I don't remember the exact conversation, but I had the idea of doing a retro gaming show. And I just, I pitched it to him and just said, this is what I, I want it to be. Would you be interested in? And he was like, he is to this day. He's he's the best. He's one of my best friends in real life. And he's one of the biggest gamers I know. So it just seemed like a perfect fit. And I was like, would you want to come over? And I was like, no one's going to listen to this anyway. Like I said in the first episode. So uh, it's never, I've never had any trouble uh, getting anyone on the show outside of the occasional guests that I've reached out to uh, that hasn't responded. But those are like bigger name guests that I'm trying to interview. And they don't, they don't want to talk to fucking old small potatoes, Northern Alberta blank. And they can all go fuck themselves. Unless they change their minds and want to come on the show, then by all means, uh, message me. So no, I, it's, I've just never had any trouble. Most of them are comedians that just want to talk. Uh, and finally, to wrap this thing up, it's letter time. It's letter time. And JB Sharps wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, short and sweet blow this week. What game do you most regret playing for the podcast? That's a really good question, JB. Because I thought about going a couple of ways. I thought about going with like Shaq Fu and being like, it was just a waste of my time and it fucking sucks. And uh, I wish I had just never touched it. But you know what? So it's a three-way tie, I guess. It would be Shaq Fu because it wasted, you know, a couple hours of my life and I'm mad that I spent my time playing that stupid game. Uh, it might be Echo the Dolphin because I really do have fond memories as a kid. I've told this story of playing Echo the Dolphin at the dentist. My dentist as a child had a Genesis in the waiting room and I would always go there to play. And I mean, I'd go there to get my teeth done, I guess, but I would go there to play Echo the Dolphin. And I had fond memories of playing that game in 15 minute intervals. It was a lot of fun to just fuck around and swim as a dolphin. And then when I actually sat down and tried to play it for the show and realized how shitty it is. Uh, that really broke my heart. And then, you know what the third game is, is, um, I hate to say it, but it's Sonic Adventure 2 because I know how many people love it and I really like Sonic and I quite like the original Sonic Adventure and I wanted to like Sonic Adventure 2 and I just fucking hated it and I wish that I'd never played it and just had it in my mind that it was just a bigger, better Sonic Adventure and never touched it. So it'd be one of those three, but it, mm, you know what? If I have to give you a definitive answer, I'll say Echo the Dolphin because I, I went from really liking that game to just despising it. Whereas... I had no previous uh, opinions on Shaq Fu or uh, Sonic Adventure. Or, yeah, not any serious uh, opinions on the other two. So I'll go with Echo. I'll, I'll go with Echo the Dolphin. Uh, thank you to everybody that wrote in this week, as always. We got to keep this train chugging. So let's switch things up and get into our Smash Hit segment, the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. It's Play One, Remake One, Fucking Erase One. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week, I give our listeners three retro video games. They can play one as it was released, remake one as a modern game, and the third is erased from time forever. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one, and we'll get to that in just a minute. This week, I decided to go with three Xbox arcade games from the 360 era in lieu of, you know, Castle Crashers. We've got Braid, Trials HD, and Shadow Complex. And 31%... Of you said you'd play Braid, Remake Shadow Complex, and Erase Trials HD. Let's see what a few of you had to say here, and then I will tell you what the right answer was. Casey Long wrote in and said, Play Trials HD. I love that game, and I wouldn't change it. Play Braid. I don't know shit about it, but it looks like fun. Always love the side-scrollers. And then Erase Shadow Complex. I don't know it either, but it looks like a game I would probably suck at and rage quit. Now, here's the thing. When I originally read your comment, I read it as Play Trials Remake Braid, Erase Shadow Complex. And I liked the idea that you were erasing a game that you thought you would suck at and rage quit. And I was like, well, that's smart. Get out in front of it and erase a game that's going to make you rage. But you said play two games. Whether that was intentional or not, you snuck a goddamn breach of the rules into my conversation i can't won't let that happen double secret probation casey the fuck out of my house you can't cheat like that if it was an accident you're still on double secret probation for making a mistake that's how it works around here major tom i don't make mistakes except maybe uh, pronouncing names and saying words which is my anyway doesn't matter uh major tom 02 wrote in and said play braid i never did but i thought it looked cool and i'd like to go back and try it remake shadow complex because i really liked it when it came out and it would look great remade and erase trials because rules are rules because rules are rules thank you so much i would expect that kind of discipline from somebody with a name like major tom 02 much better than plain old major tom 01 so thank you and uh yeah braid braid i never played a lot of braid either but it is a cool looking game uh, I am the Johnny Five 
wrote in and said, basing my answer on screenshots as I've only played Trials, I'll play Shadow Complex because a Metroidvania sounds fun. I'll remake Braid and clean up the art for some reason. It looks simultaneously great and shit. <laughs> I think it looks great, but I see where you're coming from. And Erase Trials as I've had my fun with it, and well, it will be missed. I want to try something new. That's how it's done. You fucking, you live on the edge, Johnny. I like that logic a lot. Fucking erase the one you've played. Try something different. You've already had a peanut butter sandwich. Try a goddamn, I don't know. What's one of the weird fucking sandwiches? Try a honey sandwich. Uh, oh, fuck, I hate honey sandwiches. Crash Override wrote in and said, Play Braid. The developer really tried to give us more than a game here, and it shows. Braid is as close to a work of art as a video game can get, and it deserves the respect of being preserved in its original state for generations to come. I like the passion. Remake Trials. Countless hours lost in this original gem. Keep the controls as they were. Damn near perfect. Introduce some new animations. Splash some color and absurdity. Maybe throw in a chimpanzee driver and take my money. Staying within the rules of the game, I'll erase Shadow Complex. I never played it, and I would not know what I'm missing. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. I, You know what? Your, your cell of braid wowed me. That was uh, well said, Crash Override. Well said. And Ombre de Queso wrote in and said, Play Braid. It's a cool concept and still looks good today. Remake Shadow Complex. Look good for the time, but it could use a new coat of paint and maybe make it a little bit longer. And Erase Trials. Great game, but there's like 10 of them and only one Braid and one Shadow Complex. And I like that logic too. And sometimes people argue with me and they say, uh, well, if we erase one Trials, do we erase all the Trials? Nobody knows. That's the magic. Of play one, remake one, erase one. Nobody knows. Uh, I'm actually going to go with the majority of you this week. 31% of you. Uh, including Red Sparrows 11. Who said, play Braid because the art style doesn't need to be updated. And it's an amazing game. No reason to remake it. Remake Shadow Complex because I haven't played it. So maybe if I will. Or maybe I will if it's on a new console. And erase Trials because there are several Trials games that I can play. So the first one won't be missed. My logic isn't the same. But my order is. I personally would play Braid. Because I have played just a little bit of it. And I've always wanted to go back and, and give it a proper playthrough. I think it looks just like it would scratch every itch I have. I'm going to remake Shadow Complex because it looks right up my alley. I fucking love 2D Metroidvanias. I just figured a remake will just make it better. You know, I don't want to change anything. Just clean it up. Quality of life, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to erase Trials HD because it looks cool, but I would rather play Braid and Shadow Complex. And I have Tony Hawk. I don't even know what exactly Trials is, but I, no offense to it. I have the other two. I don't need Trials. So that's what I would do. So thank you to everybody that wrote in and played this week. As always, I appreciate it. Before I get to what I've been playing, I might be uh, squeaking in a quick word from a sponsor. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work they can help you work through your issues learn to communicate better and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it i've talked to my therapist about my relationships especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much i was away from home and they helped me work on ways to keep my relationship strong even when i was out on the road uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs, and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Or maybe not. I don't know if we had a sponsor this week. If we do, there was one just right there. Uh, what have I been playing over the last seven days? God of War Ragnarok. I finished it a couple of days ago. Uh, in case you're wondering how finished it, I did. I'm not going to spoil anything, I promise. But I beat the game, and then there's like... Um, how do I say it without spoiling anything? There's like a little bit of a post-game thing that's like 10 minutes long. And anyone that's beat it, you know what I'm talking about. I beat that part too. Uh, and I think I'm done. I'm like 40, 45 hours in. There's like, I could go out and do a bunch of optional fights and stuff, but I've had my fun. I know I'm just going to end up raging at some of those other fights and I'm ready to move on to another game. So I'll be reviewing that on Expansion Pass in January, but really, really, really good game. Uh, I've also been playing High on Life, the new first-person shooter on Xbox uh, Game Pass from the creator of Rick and Morty. 
Uh, I'll probably review that on Expansion Pass at some point too. I think it's hilarious. I think the gameplay is kind of lame. But the humor offsets it. So uh, I'm also playing Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. I almost feel the same as I do on High on Life. I think the gameplay is kind of... But I think the game is charming and very funny. And then uh, I guess it's time to let the cat out of the bag if you didn't already know. Next week's episode, the big surprise final episode of Remember the Game to wrap up the year is going to be about Portal. And uh, I finally played the original Portal over the last week and uh, I get it I get the hype I understand why you all love this fucking game so much Mark McHugh and I are going to review it in a few days and uh, whoo, what a brilliant little fucking video game uh, so anyway but that's next week this is this week and this week we're talking Castle Crashers as always I like to give uh, my listeners a chance to sound off on the game we're talking about before my guest and I hog the microphone and uh, a bunch of you sounded off this week shifty looking Thane wrote in and said, I forgot this game even existed, but I remember playing it with my two best friends. I remember using the bow, I think, and I'm pretty sure I was the worst of the trio. It was fun, though. You know, I would imagine somebody with a handle like Shifty Looking Thane plays as an archer, and uh, yeah, and the archer's always going to be the worst member of the team. But I bet you you were the, you were the heart. You are the heart of the team because people had to keep picking you up because you were dead because you were the archer. Uh, Brandito wrote in and said, this is truly a beautiful four-player co-op game from the dumb humor to the funny-looking sick monsters and the art to that blast-off diarrhea the poor deer has. Fucking hilarious. If you like this game, there's a turn-based tactical strategy game by the same company called Pit People, which has the same art style and even more excellent humor that makes you not want to put it down. I'll have to keep that in mind because I love tactical strategy games and I love the art style and the humor in this game. I think it's fucking... That poor deer. I love the way this game looks. Uh, Frosty Bear wrote in and said, how can I bring justice to this gem with only words? This game has great gameplay, beautiful and colorful graphics, a great soundtrack and sound, a character progression system, four-player couch co-op that five-year-olds can participate in, great humor, and a reference to Terminator 2. Wait till you hear us talk about that. It's coming. Oh, God. All that for a budget title. I cannot say enough about this game. There are also quite a few weapons and pets to collect. This is a game that I have played solo a lot, but the best of times are playing it with my girlfriend and kids. Everyone got their character, and we leveled them up as we played and replayed. It's the little things. Come up to a big stack of hay, and look, there's a pitchfork weapon. Once or twice, you get to sneak up onto sleeping animals enemies it's fun shitting boosted deer you have to ride on i'm laughing just thinking about it i would pay dearly to have a second installment where they might have more depth to the character stats the gameplay and the end game when your character is over leveled this gets my frosty two bear paws and bear hug stamp of approval i totally agree with castle crashers too we talk about that a little bit as well i would love a sequel to this game with a little bit more depth but the game is fucking phenomenal uh mellow yellow 87 87 said this game revolutionized the party beat em up whether playing local on xbox live or or, or on xbox live the experience was very incredible with the creators also being involved with new grounds and made the game that much more interesting and fun well said and michael matthews said holy shit i've been anticipating this episode for so long tom fulp and dan paladin brought the new grounds game to home consoles and anything new grounds gets a giant check mark in my book the site gave creators a spotlight in their silver age of the internet and its importance can't be overstated i hope you had a blast a blast playing this one mr blank i sure fucking did and it's time for us to tell you about it first with holmes then with my buddy tyler and we're going to talk all about castle crashers i'm going to cue up some music and when it stops, it's time to talk about the crashing of Castles with Castle Crashers, which originally released on Xbox 360 back in August 27th of 2008. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go. Okay, so as I'm sure I mentioned during the infamous intro that has yet to be recorded, this is one of our prestigious sponsored episodes. I got to come up with a better name for the prestigious, but whatever. It's one of our sponsored episodes, and I oh, I feel like I'm going to fuck somebody over if I'm wrong. I want to say it's our first returning guest on one of these. I think. I don't think anyone has done two of these yet. Either way, uh, it is the sultry voice of my friend Holmes that sponsored this episode. Holmes, how you doing, buddy? Hey, how's it going, dude? Oh, Glad fucking, to be back. That fucking voice, my friend. You and I were just talking off air about <laughs> podcasting. And uh, I was like, man, you could do like a golf pod. I would listen to that. You should be reading like audiobooks. It's fucking fire. Um, I, and you know what's funny, dude? Your voice is the exact opposite of Castle Crashers. Because your voice is so like <laughs> chill and calm and soothing. And Castle Crashers is just fucking pandemonium and chaos. Uh, I'm new to this game. And I'll explain how... Uh, or how it's been treating me here as we get going. Uh, but why why Castle Crashers? 
Holmes. Why? Other than the fact that I couldn't get, I couldn't figure out how to play Ogre Battle, which was our, which was our original <laughs> episode it was going to be Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen. And I couldn't figure I tried forever and I'm too dumb. So then Holmes was like, well, this button, this game, you just mash a, and I was like, I, I can play that. Uh, but why, why Castle Crashers? Why, why do you like this game so damn much? Um, well, I mean, going back to Ogre Battle, you know, it's kind of a throwback PS1. It's like, we're like really got into playing games other than NES stuff. Yeah. So then I started thinking about something like, what's off the wall? What have I put a ton of time into? And what would be fun to cover? And so me and a buddy of mine started playing Castle Crashers the other day. And I was like, well, let's look this up. I looked it up. Uh, the damn thing's 14 years old. So it that's, meets your criteria. That's fucked. Because I, even though I didn't play it, I remember when this game came out. This was a big deal when it came out. I never, even right now, I never would have guessed 14 years. I would have guessed 10 years, maybe. Yeah. I never would have guessed came out in long. August, August of 08. Holy which I, I can't even. And the reason why I played it so much is because it was on the 360. Yeah. I was in college. I had buddies that came over. We drank. We played video games. And this was the perfect video game to sit there, drink, and grind on for hours and hours. No question. No question. It's a perfect game to play when you're inebriated because oh, yeah. it's not, I mean, like, I mean, we'll get into the hard mode, that hard mode, <laughs> maybe not so much, but, uh, yeah. but the regular, but the regular mode, like you only need to be semi-conscious to be able to play it, but it's not, but at the same time, like it's not boring. You know what I mean? Like yeah. some, some beat em ups are just so thin. They get, I love the turtles beat em ups, but a lot of them are fucking like, Tracing paper yeah. thin. Uh, well, let me make make the Shredder's Revenge comparison. I mean, Shredder's Revenge, tons of fun. Totally. But the only thing you do in that game is level up your power bar. Totally. In this game, you know, you level up, you level up your stats, you get different weapons, different animal companions, and two different difficulties. I mean, yeah, there you go. Well, and like, like I'm not sitting. I'm not going to be like this was the first Xbox Live game because I know that's not the, <laughs> that's not the case. But like, I I know that's not the case. But like. When I think, because I love the Xbox 360. Like, d- dude, how good was the fucking Xbox 360? What a great console. Awesome. I'm so glad that thing came out when I was in college. That's exactly uh, when I needed it. Still, uh, I don't give a fuck. Like, I like my Series X, but still Xbox's best work is the Xbox 360 by a mile. But I, sure. I remember I remember when this game came out, and it was like... Like, I know it's not the first Xbox Live game. I, I don't think it's like the first Xbox arcade game, but it kind of felt... Like the first Xbox arcade game that really got like mainstream coverage. Do you right. know what I mean? Like it was everywhere when it, and like, and like now I don't know anything about its history. Like it had to do with like the website or something, right? Like yeah, I have the new grounds affiliation. The guys made video games for new grounds and everything like that. Right. We're, okay. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know anything about new grounds. Uh, that fucking either ages me or I'm just out of touch. <laughs> But like, so that must have played into its popularity because I'm not dunking on it. It's a great little game, but I just like, how did this game blow up like it did? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think uh, the game they made before it, that got a lot of popularity on Newgrounds. It's called Alien Hominid, which oh, is like okay. those little yellow guys that we killed yeah. in the game on the yeah. spaceship. Those guys, you're one of those guys who jump around blasting stuff and it was oh. from the Windows browser. Okay. Well, that got a lot of popularity, got some attention, and then they you know, made this one. Okay. It just feels like a perfect storm. Cause like, again, not to dunk on it. Great game. But I just, even playing it now, like I've, I played the remastered version, you know, over the last few weeks to get ready for this. Yeah. And I was like, this is tight. Still plays great today. Fun game. Looks nice. But I was like, this isn't like, it's not a game. It's not an earth shattering game, but I just I, like, I, dude, so like I've told you, uh, like when this game came out, I wanted to play it. I just didn't have any friends that would play it with me. Yeah, I was lucky because I was in college, so I played it with my two best friends, and then at the time, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, right, and we still play it to this day. Yeah, like I said the other day, like me and one of my buddies were were playing it, and then she came downstairs and was like, "What? You didn't invite me?" <laughs> so we we fired it up and we all started playing together. So I, I mean, it's it. just it's still just a fun game. It's simple, but there's enough nuances to it between like the different attacks and being aerial and attacking and the magic and everything like that totally it just it lends to it, it, it it's an endearing game especially with the humor the yeah humor. oh dude the <laughs> fucking I, the first time i played through this game the forest level and i saw the owl sitting in the tree and i like i went up and started like swinging at it because i thought maybe it'd fly away and drop an item or something and then it poops behind the bush and it made me laugh and i was like all right that's good i'm i'm a 
I'm a 39 year old child. I like poop jokes. That's good stuff. And then that stupid deer like rockets away pooping. And then that bear pops up and you think it's the enemy. And then it just completely shits its pants behind the bushes. Fuck. I don't give a, I don't care. I was like, I'm it's, it's getting at least like an eight out of 10 equivalent score. Even if I hate the rest of this game, because it's got, it's full of poop jokes and you're right. Just exactly. The, it's perfect. Oh, fuck the So, uh, the animation, everything. So like some people, when I said I was going to play it, everyone was like, play it multiplayer. They're like, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't play a multiplayer. Uh, I, I and I, multiplayer is fun, but I, I like it. I kind of like it single player too. Like, are you, mm-hmm. are you like, yeah. Like uh, for me, it's really weird playing it single player because I always played it with other people. Right. But um, I never played it with four people regularly all the time. It was normally one, two, three. Right. And so it's a lot easier to level up and do all that kind of stuff. Okay. When uh, we were playing the other day and there was four of us, it was a little hectic. And then like I came in with a level 20 something just to try and help out. Yeah. And you're all like level ones. That was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> that was brutal. Yeah. Because you're all getting less experience. They're all twice as tough, dealing twice the damage. It was just, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. We were, when we were playing a four player, we were getting shit kicked. But then you and I played it two player. Uh, and we went on that hard mode. And uh, let me say, <laughs> we got our shit pushed in. We sure did. Fuck me, did we? But like, it was awesome. I really, I love that that hard mode exists because that gives you a reason to come back. Um, I'll ask you, dude, if what is the, in your expert opinion, and I use that term loosely, but compared to myself, you're a Castle Crashers guru. Uh, what's the optimal way to play this? How many players and like easy or hard? Like how, what's the optimal, if you were just going to, what's your, what's your go-to? Preferred, I would say, if you're starting off on level one, two people. Okay. Um, but if you have like the giraffe to help with the giraffe animal to double your XP or increase it, or at least whatever it is, um, you can do up to three, but I would say two people going through regular, once you get past level 20 or 30, bring in a third. Right. If you're going to do four people, it's best to do either, I would say on insane, but be level 40 plus. Right. Yeah. Well, dude, when we were playing at four player, like, and admittedly, I made this stupid mistake of picking one of the characters that is one of the enemies. Uh, so I can't remember who I picked, but we got to like the levels where you fight the enemies that I was controlling one of. And I yeah. was getting so mad because I had no idea who the fuck I was. I had no <laughs> fucking idea. Um, I think you're right. You, you you mentioned Shredder's Revenge. Like Shredder's Revenge is dope. But when you play yeah. it with five or six players, it's almost like it's just a button mashing arcade game. You have no idea where you are. And yeah, exactly. uh, I found that with Crashers. Like when we were playing it four players, it was fun to play it with three of the lads and just make jokes and have fun. But like I, I from like a, you know, quote unquote strategic beat him up i actually enjoyed the two-player gameplay more uh um, yeah that was just me though um and then my other thing i wanted to ask you was like there's so many characters in this game and i'm i've only played as like four of them i'm still learning all of them uh right. who who's who's the bet who's 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 holmes is ace in the hole who's your go-to uh, so the character i was playing with when we were playing the blue knight it's not my favorite class to play but it's probably one of the most useful ones because you can freeze so many enemies with him. Right. And he deals a lot of magic damage. Right. So being able to throw down those icicles, freeze them, hold them in place, then you can hit other ones or group them all together and start pounding on them helps a ton. My favorite though, are the guy, the two characters that you unlock with the blue knight once you beat the game with them and they use the saw blades because those are boss killers. Now, so instead of go ahead. calling in a line of ice, he calls in a grouping of like saw blades. Yeah. And they don't do a ton of damage, but there's so many of them. Right. Like the, um, uh, what do you call them? The, the boss at the end that has all the little painting guys. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the magic leveled up on that guy, um, all the way, all the way, and then go in there to him, you can kill him in one blast of the magic. That's sick. So like one magic. Power. I know that like, I know that this game has nothing to do with Capcom or anything like that, but I'll just ask you, do you think, we're just speculating here. Conspiracy theory, tin, tin, tin hat, tin, tin foil hat. Do you think that making that saw blade magic is overpowered as they did? Is do you think there's any chance that's a tribute to Mega Man Two and the Metal Blade? Like I can't help but think that way. Or do you think like am I crazy? I I like to think that everyone in gaming respects Mega Man as much as I do, but I don't know if that's true. 
You know, I never actually thought, even thought about that. I mean, oh, so maybe? then no, it probably no, it probably but, isn't. Then it probably isn't. Then I'm just the fucking loser who only knows. But like, the funny, the funny thing too is, is like from the the original version of the game to the remastered, they nerfed that saw blade too because it used to do twice as much damage. So once they realized that everybody was using it to kill all the bosses, they cut the damage in half, and it uh, still mows them down. But they did okay. nerf it. So then, all right. So then, I'll ask you this, um, because you've played the re- I've played the remastered version with you, so I know you've played it, but yeah. I know you played the OG one back in your uh, in your college days. Uh, preference is the remastered one better? Uh, yeah, I would say so because it just combines everything really nicely. Because I had a little bit of DLC with it, and they got rid of some bugs, um, but not that there were very many to begin with. But no, um, I would say the remaster is nice just because it's all bundled together and. Like we went to the insane store before we uh, went under the the insane mode, the hard mode. Yeah, and then all that stuff there, all nice laid out. So I, I would say the the, the remastered is a, a good way to play it. Yeah, and I and I'll tell you, man. Like, I mean, I'm gonna get into this more with Tyler in a minute, but like uh, playing it in 2022, uh, still I, I can't believe it's 14 years old. Still fucking like. I don't think it shows its age at all. Like I like my only quote unquote qualm, I guess with the game and it's so minor is, uh, and I wasn't sure it was that they're, they're outside of their magic. It doesn't seem to be a lot of difference in the characters. And so I was like, yeah. if you don't want to play a magic build, like if you just want to play a melee build, it almost feels like it doesn't matter who you pick. Yeah. You just pick whoever you think looks nice, but that's just, that doesn't even really matter. Like it's not a big deal. And like, it is fun to pick the characters. So, okay. So then I'll ask you then who, who's your favorite? Like, who's just, do you have like a favorite character? I would just stick with the blue knight. The, yeah. You know, the OG blue knight, just cause he's so useful. Yeah. And his magic is probably the most powerful. I Like, so. I like optically, I think the, uh, <laughs> that's the, the pink guy with like the kisses on his mask with like the, yeah like pixelated rainbow wand made me chuckle. Like, I like that you could basically, there's like an endless amount of characters you could make with that palette if you wanted to. Yeah. And like once that one released, that was my wife's favorite character. Yeah. So it was me as the blue knight, her as the pink knight, and then our buddies would play whatever. I love it. Like it's, I almost wish it had like a creator character in it. Like that you could just do whatever you wanted with the like, I never even thought about that. That would be perfect. Like, yeah. or even just combine different elements from different ones. Yeah. And then pick a palette. Oh, God. And that'd just be make awesome. it look however you want. That'd be so sick. Uh, okay. So, like, okay, we got to start wrapping this up. Um, okay, fuck. Okay. I didn't think there was anything to say about this game, but like, we've barely even scratched the surface. Yeah. Um, and you haven't even talked about all the bosses. Have fun no, with that with your And that's, what, that's, that's exactly where I was going to go. Uh, I know who I hate and I know who I love. Uh, favorite and least favorite boss in the game. I know I'm putting you on the Ooh. spot. You know, um, favorite boss, I'll go ahead and throw it to the big cat in the water just because I loved watching my friends die to it all the time. And I never really, did. I fucking hate that. All right, no, God. he's my no. least favorite boss in the fucking game because he's so fucking well, such a I'm pain always the, the one that had to kill him. I'm ah. always the one that had to kill him. So everybody else would die. I'm like, fuck, okay, fine. I'll do it by myself. Five, okay, 10 minutes later, him. here we go. He's a cool and design. Then, least favorite boss. I mean, if we're going to go pain in the ass, I hate the ice guy just because of the yeah. sliding on the ice. That, yeah. Dude, we were talking about that the other night when we were playing. Uh, yeah. yeah, that ice guy, actually, yeah, I hate him more than the cat. Too. The Doing that on insane, awesome. even with full defense getting hit by those icicles, if you mess up on the slide, they they drop almost a full bar of elf. Right. Yeah, he's yeah, he's such a I, dude. It made me feel better when you said that was how you had to fight him because I thought maybe I was doing something wrong. Cause I was yeah. like, I hit him like twice, and then he fucking moves, and then he moves, yeah. and he moves, and he moves. You got to do that uh, power move dive. Oh. The power, power attack dive. Yeah. I fucking hate that fucking guy. I don't like the the devil guy when you have to fight him in the trash compactor either, just because it goes yeah. forever. Like I like once you get through all of his minions, and you just he's easy. You just have to get through his fucking minions, and then I can work yeah. him. But his fucking minions, um, fucking creative game. I also. I was saying to you when we were playing the other night, I love the Medusa snake just because she wears a high heeled boot on her tail. Exactly. Like that she's never going to walk on or anything. I just, so many little things like what a clever little game, man. Yeah, um, it's awesome. Okay. So before we score it, dude, I'll ask you like, is there anything else? Like, is like, I, I have lots to still say about it. I just, I, I don't want to repeat myself twice, but like, is there anything with that you really wanted to like the world is listening and you're a fan of this game. Is there anything else that you love or hate about this game that you want to get off your chest? Is there anything we didn't no, talk about? I, 
I just think it's a great, you know, multiplayer, fun to play with friends game. It is. You know, so if you got people to play with or if you're in the Discord and need people to play it with, I'm always down to play some Castle Crashers and a few other people out there too. For sure. I could see myself playing this game for years, man. I do wish it had cross progression. Drives me crazy. Yeah. Like I'm on my Switch or at least cross pl- cross play. Like I'm on my Switch and I can only play with other people that are on my Switch, which, you know, doesn't, yeah. I guess it's a 14 year old game. Like how much more can you expect them to update it? But um, right. I, I will go with, I'll, I'll ask you this. Uh, is your favorite beat em up of all time? It's top three oh, for God. me, but I have time to think about my order. But it's top three for me for sure. For ones that if you ask me to go play a beat em up with myself or with a friend right now, easily accessible, yes. Um, one of my, the only one that gives me a hard time with that, it would be like uh, King of Dragons, another, you know, Capcom game, arcade okay. game. Okay. That I, I just love because I put so much time into it back in the day. Um, but this, yeah, no, that's number two. This is number one. This All is right. my number one beat up. Yeah, I was impressed, man. Cause like, it's like, honestly, I don't even think it's not like the gameplay is, is hell. Like, I think I'll be honest. I think Streets of Rage has deeper gameplay than this does. Like as far as the strategy that goes into it, but yeah. just having like the sheer number of characters and being able to upgrade them however you want and equip your loadout with your weapon and your animal partner and mixing and matching teams. And I just, when I started playing it, I was like, this is fun. And by the time I'd beaten it a few times, I was like, dude, this is a top three all time beat em up for me. Like what a great fucking makes me wish I had friends. The only Xbox 360 game I played online with people back in the day was left for dead. And I played it with strangers because I had no friends that played video games. And I, I would have been all about this, but all my friends were too busy fucking getting laid and shit like that. So (laughs) not me, not fucking me, Holmes. Um, We got to score this thing, my friend. So we have two scales we discussed. So one is out of 31 characters. Cause I, as far as I can tell, that's the number of playable characters now, or two would be out of 360. Cause it like, I'll always consider this an Xbox 360 game, even though it's on everything now, it's an Xbox 360 game. So uh, you, you, you're the sponsor. What do you prefer? Do you want to score it out of 31 or out of 360? Or have you got some other dumb scale? I'm, I'm open. To, I love dumb scales. You know, let's just do all the 360. Uh, yeah, that's I what I played it. it on. That's what I remember it from. Let's do that. All right. Well, then uh, the floor is yours. If you were going to score this out of 360, I love, I love that scale. What would you score? Castle Crashers. <laughs> I'll give it 340. And I'm going to dock at those 20 points only because when I tried to transfer my 360 data over to my Xbox One, it messed up and wiped all my 360 data. So I lost all my max level characters that I had from all those years when I was in college. That's fucking. I got to say, my friend, I respect the fact that you came back. Because I'll tell you, if I lost that much progress in a game, I might swear that game off forever. Like, I might straight up fucking... I might start a video game podcast and not tell anybody my agenda and wait until it's popular and then review it on an episode of the show and just just tear it a new ass. And no, I did not lose a Sonic Adventure 2 save or anything. I just hate that fucking game. But I would have done that if I'd lost that much progress. So 340 is a pretty good fucking score, man. That's like a 9.5. I think that's a pretty admirable yeah, score. I just, I don't really have any issues with it. I mean, it's just fun. Yeah, I don't either. Like, I'll get more into it in a second with Tyler, but like, you know, outside of maybe like, I wish they had also done blank. There's really not a single fault in this yeah. game. It's just a solidly made fun little game. It really yeah. is. Um, do you think we ever get a sequel? Um, It's possible. So I didn't realize until I was looking up other info on the creators and everything like that, but they did make a game after this, after the remaster called pit people. And it's a tactical game with oh. some of the same characters from this in it. I didn't realize it existed until this morning. I bought it. It is installed on my Xbox. I will let you know next week in a DM <laughs> what I think about it. Please do. Um, it rates really highly on the Xbox store, which means a lot because normally people just shit on games in there. Yeah, and cool. according to Wikipedia, there is a new Alien Hominid game in development since 2018. Oh, and those are those little yellow guys. Yep. Yeah, I love those little guys. By the way, fuck yeah, those guys are better than minions. 
Just because they're yellow, that's the only. <laughs> yes. I fucking hate the minions. So yeah. shout out to and the they look evil and they have guns and they kill things. Of course, yeah, they're better. dude. And like one of the okay, we got I gotta go. But like one of the funnest parts is yes. there's that part in the spaceship where you just get swarmed by like four hundred of them, <laughs> but they each die from like one hit, and you're just mashing away and like, oh my god, I fuck, I love this stupid game. So um, good, so good. Buddy, thank you so much for your patience for taking so I took forever to get to this fucking episode. And uh thank you for turning me on to Castle Crashers and letting me finally play a game that I wanted to play a decade and a half ago because now I have friends. <laughs> so thank you so much for doing this, buddy. I appreciate it. No problem, buddy. Glad to do it. We'll see you later. All right, so joining me via the blank phone is uh, a man that needs no introduction, but I am contractually obligated to give him one anyways, even though I've probably already said his name two or three times during the intro. It's my buddy Tyler making his triumphant return to the show. Ty- okay, first of all, Tyler, how how are you, my friend? I'm doing awesome. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, Christmas is a week from seven days from the time you and I are recording this. It is, it'll be Christmas night. So uh, I hope that uh, I'm not going to name your child on the podcast. I don't know if that's crossing any lines or not, but uh, I hope Santa is good to your child and doesn't uh, doesn't hold your child accountable for his father's actions. I hope that uh, I ho- let's, let's just let's just say I'm one of those dads who hasn't bought anybody anything. Oh, perfect. You still have seven days. Yeah. You still have seven days. <laughs> we were just talking about my that. Get, my get- my gift to the world is doing this podcast. Is that not good? Yeah, enough? this is yeah. So, <laughs> so when your <laughs> when your kid comes downstairs on Christmas morning and there's nothing under the tree and he's crushed, you can just hand him your phone and start this podcast. Be like, this is what your dad was doing, and then let's and then and this then is what you get. Yeah, and then when he listens, maybe he'd be like, well, can we at least play Castle Crashers now? And you'd be like, no, I'm playing. You can't play. It's for me. Uh, <laughs> um, dude, it's so funny because when, uh, when Holmes picked this game and I knew we were going to be talking castle crashers on the show, I don't know what it is about you. It was just like odd world. When I, when I text you to see like, Hey, oh, you've played odd world. And you're like, hell yeah. Uh, you were the first guy. I don't know what it is. I was just like, I don't know if it's the art style in this game or what it is, but I was like, fucking Tyler's played some castle crashers over the years. Oh yeah. So I crushed this game on the Xbox 360. This was like, I, I can't remember if it was free to play or if it was like five bucks or something. Like it was, it was, I, it may have even came with an Xbox 360 at one point, like as a package deal. Yeah. But I played like anybody I knew who came over was like, Oh, you want to throw down on some castle crackers? Like it was the go-to game. It was like golden. I back in the day. Someone comes over sits down and play golden night. This was the like party game, you know, pre-drink before going to the bar or something like that. Sure. Just chilling out game. Well, and it's so funny because I uh, I had never played this until, I don't know, about a month ago when I started playing it for the podcast. I love it. Uh, anyone that's a big Castle Crashers fan that's worried it's going to get a bad review, it's not. It's not. I may not know a ton about the lore of, like, uh, Newgrounds or whatever the fuck that company's called and all that, but I, I, whatever they're, but I do like this game. Uh, but I was, I was saying that, like, my big, I remember when this game launched. This was like one of the first big Xbox arcade games. Remember when 360 did Xbox that, Arcade? This was that, like that's what it was on. That's what I'm thinking of arcade. Yeah, it was this and like Geometry Wars. Yeah, uh, um, that was another great one on there. I had one of the top scores in Geometry Wars for the longest time. <laughs> do you? I played a um, lot of. Do you, did you ever play Explosion Man? That was my big Xbox game. Yeah, I love Explosion. Oh man. man. Those were great games, man. Good for fuck. The, like, how, okay, before we get into Castle Crashers, just how fucking sick was the Xbox 360? Like, the original Xbox oh. was rad. The Xbox One was awful. The series, everything's the jury's out. We'll see. I like them, but the Xbox 360 was just uh, what a it was, what a beast. It was the first console to take me away from PC gaming, where I stopped playing on the PC and was like, oh this is better yeah yeah because of games like gears of war halo 3 you know castle crashers geometry wars bioshock like it was and i'm like i'm to this day pc through and through i'm sitting here in front of my two screen like 
rainbow glowing monster of a tower PC, Xbox 360 took me away from all of that. Yeah, dude. Albeit yeah. at the time there wasn't like great PC games coming out. Sure. There was, you know, I no, know, I, like I, some ru- obscure Russian games coming out that were good. I get it. I've said many times, like the 360 is my favorite non Nintendo console ever. And it's the game. It's the console that brought me back to gaming after I kind of stopped for a while. Like that, like, and you know, what's fucked up is like, even with the red ring of death and cause I think that's the Xbox 360's legacy is the red ring of death, unfortunately. <laughs> but even with that fucking ring, everybody still loves the Xbox 360. Like what a so, and what like, a great system. And sometimes that red ring of death was like a heating error where your your Xbox was overheating and like the board was melting inside, right? Yeah. I, I remember the first Xbox three sixty I had. Uh I was working like road construction at the time, so I had the winter off and started to get the red ring. So I had the double ring, like the two that half circle yeah. burning red. So it was like, Oh, you're overheating, you're overheating. So I had this big duvet blanket that I would wrap myself in. I would open the window to my room. So that like the frigid Canadian winter would be bellowing <laughs> into my room where my Xbox Fuck. Sat, and I would just be playing Gears of War like a crazy person. I, it says something to the the legacy of that console and its library and just you know Xbox Arcade and all the things Xbox Live, all the shit people love. Because like fuck bro i've been i mean you're a gamer too your whole like i've been gaming for a long fucking time and i can't think of too many consoles where i could have i've i bought three xbox 360s because of the red ring you were opening your fucking window and risking frostbite to play xbox i can't think of too many other consoles <laughs> where we'd have to do that and we'd be like no nah, that was a great fucking system like what a legacy man I, like i don't know that's for another episode but fuck yeah i love the xbox 360 um so but castle crashers to get back on topic, I remember when this game dropped, and I thought it looked awesome. Like I like even now, I love the the, the box art or whatever you want. It's not a box, but that art, like the four knights with the the funky looking, yeah, yeah. the way they're drawn and everything like that. Uh, I never played it back in the day because I didn't have anyone to play with. All my friends, like all we were playing, were like sports games and shit. I never had anyone to play it with, and I finally sat down and started playing it. Now I'm playing it on the Switch, the remastered version. And, uh, holy fuck, dude, I'm not going to sit here and say it's definitively like my favorite beat em up hack and slash game of all time. Cause I don't, I don't think it is, but it's top three. I think it's probably up there with like streets of rage for me. Uh, so, so when building on that, like it came out in 2008, so it's old, but yeah, it is it, old. this is an old ass game at this point. Yeah. We, dude. Uh, right. It's fucking, still, it's a, fucking unreal. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. It still looks unreal. Like yeah. it looks great. It is. Because they did it in such a style, it's timeless, right? Like, it's yeah. similar to lots of the Super Mario games. Like, you go to Super Mario on the SNES, it looks good still. Like, totally. you can play it, and you're not like, oh, this graphics look like shit. Like, it looks good because it's so stylized. Yeah. It looks perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right? It, yeah, totally. And I think that's the and, thing that – oh, sorry. What were we going to say? Well, and it's like the – brother or sister game or however the twin game to alien hominoid which also holds up to today okay yeah and on that okay so like that's what i was gonna say like i look i like i love castle crashers and like i'll suck the castle crasher dick all day i think this game is great i have no idea what this whatever you just said was and holmes alien hominoid yeah holmes has brought it up too now that is the little yellow bee looking alien guys right yeah yeah that are in this game you, you mentioned this. You weren't a Newgrounds guy, right? Like Not this, at all. This stuff I, I have all, no idea this, what the fuck Newgrounds is. Newgrounds is like, uh, it's like freaking Reddit before Reddit with like video games and flash art and it's a vile place. Like it is absolutely vile. But every <laughs> now and again, <laughs> but you know, not safe for work content. It is the most disgusting place on earth. All of your childhood dreams and memories are painted there. Okay. Uh, but every now and again, there's somebody on there doing like freaking awesome stuff. Right. So the the publisher, the Behemoth, I think they were the guys who developed Alien Hominoid, Castle Crashers. They might have some other titles, but those were the two that I remember playing. And they had like some short videos and stuff on Newgrounds that developed into these games, which ended up on the Xbox Arcade, oh, and they were huge. I see. Okay, so it's like it's like along the lines of like uh, Strong Bed. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, like, Definitely. am I dating myself? Like, I don't know, like, when people bring up these internet things, like, I'm not even that much older than you. Like, I'm, like, what, two years older than you? Something like that? Yeah, but, yeah, like, two years older. I don't know any, I'm, like, I remember Stick Death. Does anyone else listening to this remember Stick Death? That's where we used to go for our internet jollies, but they never made any <laughs> video games. Anyway. Uh, well, that, so what, okay. you, what you meant by two years older was 200 yeah, years Yeah, exactly. Older. Yeah, I fucking, <laughs> dude, I, I suck. I, fuck, I'm such a boomer. It's fucking gross. Uh, but no, so this game is fucking dope. And I, and yeah, I, like I wanted to touch up like, okay, so if you've never played this, ladies and gentlemen, it is like a, it's got some RPG elements, kind of. You can like level up your magic, your strength and shit like that. But basically it's a one to four player uh, hack and slash, beat em up, whatever you want to call it, where you just, Go yeah. level by level, mash and attack and beating up enemies. And that's, you know, like we'll get more into it. I guess spoilers, there's really nothing to spoil, but we'll talk about the shit that's in the game. Uh, but that's what you mentioned, dude. That's the first thing that stands out to me about this game too. Even The first second I started playing it, I was like, for a game that's almost 15 years old, admittedly I'm playing the remastered version, but it's basically the same version. It just has more like playable characters and shit in it. Uh, yeah, like it, it, it looks this, and I'm going on memory and watching some of the videos, so I say sure. it looks the same. But I mean, everything in the you know in my memory looks way better than it actually did. No, but dude, except not the, not this. Except this, for the Thundercats yeah. intro. For some reason, I went back and was watching <laughs> Thundercats, and I was like, man, this intro holds up. Like the opening credits for that show are tight. Well, <laughs> I feel like that about uh, Samurai Pizza Cats. I still love the opening oh, of Samurai man. Pizza Cats. I love that fuck. But, oh, so good. Guido Anchovy is the man. Um, but the graphics in this game, like you said it, and like they're not revolutionary or anything. It's just there's something about them and the way they're drawn and like those four knights that are on the the, the cover art or whatever you want to call it, like the red, green, orange, blue knight. And I know there's a ton more of them now, but you look at those four and what a brilliant design because they look like... I, and I don't mean it at all as like a dig, but like they've almost got like some Power Ranger undertones to them, you know, where they all look the yeah, same yeah. but different. And like that's brilliant marketing, in my opinion, because that's going to hook yeah. anybody from our era. Like anyone from our era is going to – you can't not look – I remember when this game launched, and you can't not see that that title screen, that case art, those four knights, and not at least be intrigued as to like, well, what is this? Like it just looks – and then the fact that when you actually get into the game and start playing it, it looks identical to that cover art. Like, they nailed oh, yeah. that transition, like, you know? Yeah, you can tell, like, there's a few little things in the game that, you know, give it away as being, like, a Flash game. Like, the way they move and stuff. Right. You know, but the artwork is flawless. The, yeah. You know, simplicity of the mechanics. It, you know, it's like River City Ransom or Golden Axe. Like, it's one of those side-scrolling. Or, like, the Ninja Turtles game. Like, yeah. Turtles in Time. Yeah. It's one of those side-scrolling games, the hack and slash beat 'em ups, that you know you don't have to have it overly complicated graphically. So then they focused on style, yeah, and that is beautiful. Like that yeah. just translates so well for this. Yeah, and the thing about it is, like, it doesn't just look great because, like, the playable characters look great, the enemies look nice, the backgrounds and everything are nice. It's not just that it looks nice, but it it looks it looks funny. Like, dude, this game legitimately, there's a couple of moments. Obvi like, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. And yeah, I'm a 39-year-old man uh, with a 8-year-old sense of humor. That level in the forest where the owl poops because it's scared. <laughs> and then the deer, like, has the rocket poops. And it, like, blasts him across the screen. And then that giant <laughs> bear comes out from behind the bush and looks like he's going to attack you. But then he gets scared and just shits his pants and then hides under the bat. Like, that has made me laugh every time I've played through that level. And it's just those yeah. little things. There's stuff like uh, when you fight that that one, uh, I don't know if he's like a robot or not, but that one like big mean knight guy. And when you kill him, he falls into the pool of lava and then gives you the thumbs up. Like stuff like that. It's just, yeah, 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 yeah. what a, it's just, there's not like, and the thing is, it's like the game runs silky smooth. There's never any problems with it. And it's, it feels like they, um, I'm trying to figure out how to say this properly. I almost feel like they, like they compromised on the complexity of the art, but in a way that benefited the game, it was a less is more type thing. And it works so well. Do you know what I, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. Um, they, they didn't necessarily compromise on it though. Like the art, the original art, like the concept art for the game 
uh, it, it looks like children's drawings. Right. Like the guy who did the a lot of the lead art was a guy named Dan Paladin. So basically, like the way that game was developed too, it's got a really cool backstory. So the game was developed by all these nerds on Newgrounds. So they like borrowed, I think there was like 20 or something of them where they got like their artwork, um, the the music was all done by these new ground guys. Like it was all, it was basically like fan made game. It would be right. like an indie game, right. but by the fans for the fans, right? Okay. So you had like Dan Paladin and Tom Fulp, I think. Like these two dudes basically, you know, got all these new ground guys together and put this stuff together. So like a lot of the artwork is like something you would have drawn in Microsoft. What was that? Micro, Microsoft Paint program. Right. Like it right. looked yeah. so bad. The artwork in the game is actually like the upgrade oh, from well. the content art. <laughs> <laughs> and that like, and that's why I was like, I was trying to figure out how to say it. Cause I don't want to sound like I'm like disparaging or pooing on the art. I think it looks gorgeous, but just the fact that like, so many games, even by in when this game dropped back in 2008, like games were starting to. We were right, like we you know we were getting Gears of War, and Bioshock, and stuff like that. And this game just yeah. dared. This game dared to just be like, nah, we'll keep it simple. It's gonna be great, and it is. It's like, I think this game looks as good as anything I've played in years. Like obviously not photorealistic, but that's fine. It looks it looks like a video game. It looks like a bright, colorful, cartoony video game. And like, that's, that's yeah, I, perfect. I feel like they, they, yeah, definitely. I feel like they took something that they were like, we could have played this on the SNES and we've now polished it for the modern. Yes. The yeah. modern gaming console. Totally. That's totally. Yeah. It's, it's fucking, I love it. I, it's, it's legitimately like, I'm not going to say it's quite as beautiful as Cuphead, but it's in that same, uh, conversation. Like those are, I love the way those types of games look. Like just everything. So when looks, I played, oh, okay. when I, when I played Cuphead, this is the game that I thought of. I was like, oh, this is the better version. Of yeah, Minecraft. I mean, look, like Cuphead. Is, Cuphead is fucking one of the greatest looking video games I've ever played in my life. But uh, but this is still like it's stunning. And then like and then it what adds to it is that like not only does the game look good, it runs good. Um, it's pretty fun. Like and the and the pro and like. I know I say that like it's like a surprise, but the thing is like these hack and slash beat em ups. Look, I love the turtles as much as anybody on this planet. Everyone knows I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan, but like those old turtles beat em ups. You play them once, you play them twice, and you're like, all right, like well, that was fun. I've done that, you know. Um, and this game, like, admittedly, that is, I have one qualm, semi qualm with this game, and I'll get into that. But uh, this game just, I don't know what it is, dude. Like I've played through it by myself four times. And played through it online with some members of the community a couple of times. And, like, I'm not bored yet. And there's no variety. It's the exact same levels. It's Unless you go to the difficult mode, the insane mode or whatever. But, like, other than that, it's the same levels with the same bosses. And the characters outside of their magic and the way they look don't really even seem to be that different from each other. But there's something about it that just, it doesn't get as, it doesn't get boring. I feel like there's a, it's like, have you ever played Streets of Rage? Have you ever played in the Streets of Rage games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're, I think those are the masterclass in how to make a beat em up that doesn't get old. And I don't think Castle Crashers combat is as deep as, as, uh, Streets of Rage, but there's a, there are layers to it. And, and I, I appreciate that they didn't just, like you said, this, I don't remember what this cost, but it was like a five or $10 game or whatever the fuck it is. And they totally could have just made it like, just mash A and B, get through the game and you're golden. Uh, and they did not do that. You know, they, they give you all these different weapons. They give you the ability to level your character up however you want. Every character's got different magic. Uh, it, it just, I don't yeah. know what it is. I'm there. I haven't gotten bored yet. It's not boring. It's not boring like well, a lot of beat-em-ups are. And, and like, and you level your characters up. So you, you can customize like how you choose to level up your character. Right? Yeah. So you could, like, I was always the type of person where I max out one step. Like, uh, when I was younger, I would do you know, whatever, I would try to balance characters. And then I got, when, by the time I was playing this, I was like, ah, screw that. I'm all strength. I'm going to one hit guys with my sword and that's it. Totally. And I would have each character that I was playing be like maxed out on each stat. So then when I played with my friends, like someone would take a role, like, Oh, you're the tank, you're the wizard, you're yeah. the, you know, totally. melee fighter. You're the, I think there was arch. I, I forget what, yeah. was there a range stat? Yeah. Well, there's, there's strength, there's defense, there's magic. And then there's like your speed and your archery. Yeah. Yeah. Those so are the four categories. I would max out on the four main colored like uh characters, like the green, red, orange, 
and Blue Knight, each one would have one stat max. Right. And so then I thought that was so much fun. Once you got a four party together, it was so much fun. Totally. Yeah. And that's, and that's where I was going to go is like, like Shredder's Revenge came out this year, the Turtles game. And I think it's so in case anyone is curious, and I, I don't know if you would consider Castle Crashers a, a beat em up by definition. I think it is. Uh, I, like for me, it's it's probably Streets of Rage, uh, Castle Crashers, and then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge are probably my three favorite. Like in that order, like beat 'em up hack and slash style games, ever. And uh, like you said, wow. I, I, I what 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 is that a shock? Oh no, that yeah, that's it. Scored really high. Oh, dude, I thought like it's... something. I I thought like Turtles in Time would have been on there. No, or, uh... but that's the problem is that like Turtles in Time has no depth. Shredder's Revenge has a little bit of depth, but you can't like customize your characters. You just unlock more, you yeah. know, specials and stuff. And to me, that's the secret sauce in Castle Crashers. Is it's like, yeah, half of it is the way it looks, and half of it is the way it plays, and the way it plays, and being able to be like, like the first time I played through it, I played as the green guy, and I maxed out my strength and my defense. And so my magic was useless, but I was a hardcore tank. And then the second time I played, I played as the uh, the purple guy with like antlers. He's like this big funky looking guy. And uh, yeah, I think he's the blacksmith or something like that. Yeah, and I maxed out his magic, and so I was like, dude, like I my my physical attacks were useless, but I was just keeping my distance and just whamming people with magic. And I like that you could do that, like. And then I started playing as the orange guy, and I was like, well, I'm gonna see what his magic is, and he throws fire, and I'm like, well, this is fucking sick. And every character levels up differently, and that was my one complaint about it. It's rad that as you level characters up, you unlock new attack like combos like hit you know light attack jump have it heavy attack light attack i like that that happens and this is such a minor criticism and like you said it's like a small indie made game i don't expect the world's you know all the depth in the world here but like i just wish there was and 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 maybe i'm wrong but i don't believe i am i wish there was some kind of difference in each character's melee attacks because i feel like outside of their magic which is different for each character they're pretty well the same that's my understanding. Yeah, yeah, um, I think so. And so, I, I, and I don't know about a, I don't know about a lot of the newer characters because, like, I, I just, I today just bought this game again. Right. I went and was looking up some stuff, being like, oh, oh, I don't recognize this pink knight. Right. And like I said, I played the shit out of this game back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going like, who, who the hell is this guy? I don't remember, you know. And then looked it up and was like, oh, they've had expansions come out. They've remastered it. Oh, yeah. There's tons of new content there. It looks like there might be even new levels. So, yeah, it, you know, like. Yeah. No, there's. Yeah, there's, there's, a, lots. there's a there's a killer beekeeper character now. Which yeah. I will be checking out. Yeah, dude. It's fucking sick. Like, I. So, OK. So uh, when we were playing it online one night, I decided to play as one of the uh, enemies that I had unlocked. It was like one of those fucking gray i don't know what they are just like the gray dark knight guys like I, I decided to play as one of them and it was really fun for the first couple of levels then we got to the level where you fight them and for the fucking life of me i could not figure out who i was and who like all the enemy ones were and like not even a complaint it was just funny but like to me that's where the replay comes in is it's like turtles is great you know shredder's revenge is great but it's like once I play through it as the four turtles, Splinter, April, and Casey, who all play almost the same, I'm like, all right, well, that was neat. Whereas this one, like, I have three dozen characters almost to find out what all their magic spells and stuff are. And that was my one beef was just if you don't want to play a magic build, it's just the same. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you, end up, you end up just being a smash up like every other Right. Game. And the, and it's again which, minor complaint, but I just wish there was some kind of depth to it, like a special move or something. That you could unlock yeah. to like just have yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit of variety to them, but minor, minor, well, I thought minor they complaint. did have a. I thought they did have a special move so, for their melee, like a tornado attack or something. Like that. Well, they have like other attacks that they can do, but I'm I'm ninety, and I mean, if I'm wrong, fucking people are gonna yell at me. But like, I'm almost positive that for the most part, their melee attacks are pretty well the same. It's just like they may do something like a slightly different, but it's the same. Like, you just pick up the different ki types of attacks as you level them up. It's just the magic is the big focus. Because the magic varies so much. Like, the blue guy can freeze people in place. The orange guy lights people on fire. The green guy can, yeah. like, poison people. And, like, but if you don't want to play magic, then it the variety is kind of gone. That's all. My, yeah, yeah. Again, the red my, guy has, like, lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Other than that, though, like, it's... I, and I want to get into some of the characters, and I want to get into some of the levels 
uh, and some of the bosses here in a second because they're fucking awesome. We're just going to take a quick break for an ad, maybe. All right, so maybe there was just an ad there. Uh, so yeah, that's what I was. Or maybe not. Maybe You'll not. Never know. Maybe not. Maybe things aren't going well, well here at Remember the Game Industry. Yeah, maybe. Just, <laughs> maybe we'll never know. No, I just like I've been trying to tell people like I'm trying to figure out the right way to insert ads without it ruining the show and everything and the flow. And anyway, it doesn't matter. You guys don't care about this. You care about Castle Crashers. Uh, so then I'll ask you, Tyler. First and foremost, this is the this is the question that matters. Who is your uh your main who is your who's who's if tyler's got to play one game of castle crashers to save the world who are you picking and anyone's unlocked yeah if you well any yeah yeah let's just say that yeah anyone everyone that everyone uh, that you can play as is unlocked yeah so back in the day my main was always the one of the main castle crashers like one of the main colors yeah and i think i usually played as blue i like having the uh the ice yeah. To I don't know. I just like the ice block, the ice fist that punched you in the air for your big jump and everything. I thought that was awesome. Oh, dude, uh, yes. The magic where you can bounce up in the air is is a fucking godsend. It's so good. Oh, sorry. Continue. T- today though, today with like the expansion and all the extra characters, I would probably play as the alien hominoid just to have the like, you know, two games from the developer. Sure. In one, would love that. But now, uh, don't, do you remember? There's the level where you're on the alien ship. And you get swarmed by like 300 of those little bastards. I can't even, <laughs> I've never played as him in there. I can't imagine trying to figure out which one you are in this fucking sea of like a thousand just of these little yellow swinging. bug. Yeah. You just start mashing attack. Yeah. Just start swinging. Totally. Yeah. Um, But there's so many new characters. Like now, if I go back and like, I am going to back and play it. I just, like I said, picked it up. I probably, I want to try as like the beekeeper yeah. who wasn't in there. The pink knight. Like I want to try a bunch of these knights. The king. I don't think you could play as the king back in the day. Maybe you could have. And I just sucked and didn't figure it out. Yeah. No. Um, it, yeah. It's, but like I had some of my knights to like net level 99, I think was the max you could level them yeah, up to. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking, it's, it's, I, I was really shocked when I started playing it and saw just how many characters. And then like, when you go through and like you beat the game with different knights, you unlock other knights. When you beat the arenas, you get different characters that you can play as and stuff like that. And it like the, the fucking roster. I love the arenas, but the fucking roster of characters you can get is like, I was saying to, uh, to Holmes, like I bought it on my switch and I was like, I could see myself just casually playing this for the next couple of years. Like I'm, I'm bored one night. I just hop in and go through a run on castle crashers and try out a new character. Uh, and just pick a different one. Like right now, I would say my favorite is probably the orange guy, the fire guy, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's just the one I've spent the most time with. Um, and now that I've tried playing it on the insane difficulty, uh, it turns out I'm not like I thought I was getting good because like I was I was working this game, and then I tried the insane difficulty, and I was like, oh, I'm not very good. <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> that that shit doesn't fuck around. Um. So then I'll ask you too, like one of the things I think is brilliant about this game, I think some of the boss fights are outstanding, like some of them. Uh, and I know you haven't played it in a few years, so I'm putting you on the spot. You might be rusty. Is there one you remember? Because like, I have a favorite and I have one that I fucking hate. So I'm just curious. Um, I remember, I, so I remember like the Barbarian boss, which is kind of the first one. Like there's the Battering Ram, but that's a mini boss leading yeah. into the Barbarian. The Barbarian's, uh, I really the, barbarian's like- the guy with the big spike backpack, right? Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. first real boss you yeah. fight. The yeah. troll mother, I thought that was fun where you're trying to escape her and you're riding on deer. Yeah, yeah. Like you're riding on Bambi and trying to escape. Um, the, I think my favorite boss to fight was the, uh, the undead Cyclops. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the guy that you're saying yeah. that falls in the lava. That's the lava guy. The thumbs up that. The, the Terminator thing. I <laughs> so, thought that was really fun. I like that made me laugh my ass off the first time I played it. Okay, so I have I to. The, I just I like. I remember the corn boss. I remember that just being super funny. Yeah, the corn is, and like the fact that like when you're fighting that big uh, the the corn, uh, it keeps dropping popcorn, and they give you like one HP back. So while you're attacking, you can run around and inhale all this popcorn. I was just going to say that Cyclops that does the thumbs up in the lava and everyone that's listening is going to yell at me, but like, I don't watch a lot of movies. I've never seen the Terminator movies. I had no idea that was, I know, I know, get in there. Go I get all the time. It's not just the Terminator movie either, Adam. That's Terminator 2. I know. That's what everyone keeps telling me. Yeah, I know. It is a pillar, a pillar of modern. I don't watch cinema. movies. Cinema. I only saw Star Wars for the first time, like over the pandemic, because I had nothing else to do. I've never seen anything. It, 
but rewind back into the pandemic and watch T2. <laughs> like that's way more important of a film. I, Hot take. All the nerds in the world are mad at me, but Terminator 2 is way more important of a film. Well, I never knew that that thumbs up was from that. And then Holmes told me and I was like, oh man. And then I, I've been debating for days whether or not I was going to admit that I didn't know that was a reference to Terminator on the show. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever. People fucking hate me already. I'm just going to say it. Um, I thought he was just giving you the thumbs up to be like, hey, good game. You got me. Like, I didn't realize that was a reference to a movie. I thought it was just him being a gracious loser. But I guess not. I guess, well, maybe it is still. I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I like that boss fight too. I love the uh, Medusa snake. Uh, and the reason yeah. I, the reason I like her so much is because she's got like a single, like Ugg boot on the end of her tail. Like she just <laughs> wears like one, like spiky heeled boot on the end of her tail. And that's like all, I think that's as, it. I love that. As, I mean, as a Medusa would. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, I really like that fight. Um, I really like the, uh, the, the fucking Cyclops guy as well. You know what fight I fucking hate? is uh so we were we were bitching about this early i hate the ice guy because he's so hard to hit you hit him like once and then you gotta like dodge his fucking attacks and he he just goes forever i hate that fucking guy and the other one i hate i think it's a really cool design but i hate that fucking cat that you have to fight in the water and you have to like move yeah, and yeah, let yeah. it run into the boat because it just i didn't like oh. i didn't like that whole level i hate that was the level that gave me the most uh not anxiety but i just yeah it wasn't my no, I, I yeah, I don't like that level either. It just takes forever and it's slow and feels like a little bit of a gimmick trying to stay on the log or whatever in the water. I I don't care. I think it's a cool design. I don't think there's a bad looking boss in this game, but I hate I hate no. those I hate those two boss fights. Oh, uh, honorable mention to the fucking big fire breathing dragon thing that has the sock puppet hand. And, and it's like, remember, it's like reaching around the mountain yeah. and you're fighting it, but you're also fighting this stupid sock puppet. And it's not a hard yeah, fight. Yeah, that was funny. That's just clever. That was funny. Yeah. Clever game. Yeah. Um, and then obviously. Did, what was your favorite weapon? Uh, You know what? So I don't know if I have one. I kind of just go with whatever works with the build I'm working with on the, at that time. Like, yeah, because you know that like all the weapons gave you perks to certain things. Some of them had special abilities. Like yeah. the demon sword was probably my go-to which is that like lava sword with a little i don't know dragon face on the end yeah and i think it was like it gave you plus two strength and some other like it was all positive stats but then it also did flame damage when you hit someone with it. right yeah i don't i don't know if i i mean i really like that there's some stupid weapons uh i've tried to go oh, yeah, to like a play where i use like a twig as my weapon the whole yeah. but like the game does there get is, tough there is there were some that gave you nothing but negative stats except for two, like, uh, you know, like it would, it'd give you like negative two, negative two, negative two. And then your agility would be like plus six. Like, sure. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is a weapon for the guy who's only using his bow and arrow. Totally. Yeah. But that's part of the genius of this game as well. Like, and is it's, and that's what keeps it from getting tedious and repetitive as a, as a, a beat up or whatever you want to call it is the fact that like you can, you can pick whatever character you want and level them up however you want and make them a tank or make them a wizard or make them an archer or whatever. But then you also get these individual weapons and some of them look badass and some of them look so stupid, but they all have their own perks and, and equipment and stuff like that. And then you also get your little animal companions that fly around behind you that you can get like yeah, a mix yeah. and match and stuff like that. And to me, that's what keeps me coming back is I'm like, all right, I'm going to pick a new knight that I've never played as. I'm going to try some new weapons I've never used and I'm going to get a different animal that I've never had before. And, and it's like, it it's the same game, but it's different, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I fucking, I love that. I, d do you have a favorite animal that follows you uh, around? The, it's like a little frog with his tongue out. Oh yeah. I like the, um, there's like a ram and it's got like the two big horns and it knocks enemies down. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I just think he looks cool. So he's always the one that I like to bring with me. Oh, fuck. Speaking of looking cool, too. First of all, that stupid dance they do where they throw up the horns and just, like, you know, fucking, like, bob their head. I love that little dance. And that stupid music that plays. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm sure I've played it during this episode. But the music just sounds so stupid. And it just, it all fits, like, so well. Uh... I fucking love that stupid little dance. Like I would wish I had that as like an avatar on like my Reddit, just that or on my fucking uh, discord, just that little thing. I love that. 
Ah, uh, fuck. And now I lost my train of thought on what else I was going to talk about. Oh, uh, speaking of looking cool, I love that when you play multiplayer, when you beat a level and you beat a boss and you save like a princess or whatever, uh, then you get to fight for her and you get to actually fight <laughs> each other. That is like the coolest dude. When we were playing it online, we had a couple of like epic showdowns and it was like, and then like, and the whole time this, she's like, I don't want any of you. You're all fucking stupid. But, uh, I is thought there, that was such a great there, little add-in. In the online, is there a voice chat with, like, were you playing with strangers? No, I was playing with some of my friends. We were just chatting over Discord, though. There wasn't, I mean, oh. a, we're playing on Nintendo Switch, ah. right? Switch doesn't do voice chat. You know that. Oh, but that's lame. Nintendo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's lame. But, uh, um, I, 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 that's all I want now is to be co oping and it's like, oh, hey, man, oh, yeah, we're working together, we're working together. It's a showdown for the princess. All right, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, oh, and it's like, yeah, it's all hands, it's, it's fucking like, let's get it on. It's the best. And then all that happens yeah. is you give her like a kiss and then something happens and she's gone and then you're, you're fucking off to the races again on the next level. I, I love it. Just a, just a brilliant little game. Um, I, I mentioned the arenas. Uh, I, I, I love the arenas. I don't know, like, I've seen some people online complain about them. Uh, and I usually don't enjoy things like that, where it's just wave after wave of enemy. But there's just something about them in this game that just hooked me. I don't know why. I just really... I beat all of them my first time through because I was trying to see the entire game. And uh, I, I just... I don't know. I don't know what it is about this fuck. I don't... Like, I don't mean to keep repeating myself. But I just... I don't know why I like this stupid game so much. Because it's not that it's there's it doesn't do anything better than anyone else but it doesn't do anything badly maybe that's the point like there's nothing i there's nothing objectively wrong with this video game in my opinion no it 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 hits on all levels like i think it's a solid 10 out of 10 yeah for what it is yeah like the style of game that is it's i like the arena battle i think that's one of my favorite things that games added for a little while so like Right around when this came out, the Dawn of War, uh, Warhammer series, though, uh, I think it was on Dawn of War 2 or something. Okay. And they had an arena, like, wave after wave. Eventually, I think it was first introduced in, like, Gears of War 3. They added something like that, Horde mode, I believe they called sure. it. And I think it enhances... It's very easy for them to put in a game because the mechanics are all there. They just have to build one level and then just have enemies generate like it's not complicated like even the arkham knight games had a time trial you know wave after wave of enemy right uh arena system i think it it's awesome it adds like an extra bit of playability it tests your skill and then you get to compete for high scores like that's how you make a game like this competitive yeah is to see who can do better in the arena right yeah yeah dude yeah i agree with that 100 percent. i yeah i just i i fucking I need to spend, so everybody was, when I started playing this game, everybody was like, make sure you play online. They're like, you got to play it with other people. That's the way to play it. And like, admittedly, yeah, hundred percent. like it is a lot of fun. Like I've played it with four people. I've played it with two people. It's a great time. I really enjoyed it. But like, I got to say, I, I haven't found it boring to play by myself either. I find it kind of therapeutic. Like I just like, I'll like just watch an episode of a show and just hack my way through a, a fucking hour of this game. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just man, like they could never in a million years have imagined this game would would have the lasting uh the staying power that it's had. I, I think they were expecting a cult following. I Sure, but like like j just because of the built-in audience in Newgrounds. Like they Sure. Like I said, it's Reddit is like the the like massive version of this game. Right. Uh, of what not pardon me, of what Newgrounds is, right? Like Newgrounds is kind of it's not the right example. Like it's hard to explain what Newgrounds is to people who aren't into it because it's kind of like Reddit, but with just video content and video games and you know, like fan made content like that. Right. But it's done in a way that is very much so like uh, I don't know. <laughs> but it's just like but they would have. They but they would have had a built in audience with that website. Like no question. People, like no question. Yeah. Like that. That was definitely like something that people would go to at school to play games. But even if but, but even if you already have that established player base and everything, like there can't be a game developer out there that expects that fifteen years later people are still playing this like let's call a spade a spade. Like it's not it's a fairly it's a great game, but it, this is not World of Warcraft. Like this is not the deepest fucking game 
ever made. It's an hour and a half long hack and slash beat em up. But the fact that like 15 years later, you're still releasing remastered versions and there's so many characters now and people are still playing it. I've had no trouble finding people to play this with anytime I've wanted to. Like there are big triple A, you know, 10 hundred million trillion billion dollar development games that don't have the staying power and the and the 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 following that this fucking game has. Like it's really and and from the day it released, knowing nothing of Newgrounds or whatever the fuck it's called. I remember when this game came out and thinking like, dude, that looks really cool. Like it's just it was the perfect storm and that it's still around like I don't know, man. I just uh I'm a fan of the game, but I also just have a lot of respect for its legacy and what it's done. You know, like it's just I've played some great games this year that won't be talked about at all in 15 years. But Castle Crashers, right. people still won't play Castle Crashers. Like, people... I get... Like, when I posted we were covering this game, people lost their shit. They are like, fuck yeah. And I was like, how the fuck does everybody love this stupid game? But now I've played it. And I'm like, no, I love it now too. I get it. So, it's like, it's like, it's like Star Wars. Everybody said Star Wars was great. And I was like, I don't know. Then I finally watched it and I was like, that's pretty good. And like maybe maybe I'll have to watch maybe I'll have to watch Terminator Two now maybe I will have to fucking try it just to see I don't know just to get that oh, you do. of the thumbs up you do one hundred and ten percent you do and when you watch it you have to keep in mind that everything they're doing there other than like and you'll be able to tell other than like maybe three special effects are all practical they all you they use like blank fire weaponry. They, they, so much of that movie is like animatronic or like stunt men going above and beyond. So watch that movie because it'll blow your mind. All right. Well, I'll watch it, but I'm, I'm going to try to will a Castle Crashers movie into existence now. Oh, I'm going to try to make that, that happen. I've done it with other things. I can make that happen. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, some nerd on Newgrounds is listening. Oh, to yeah. Like, we, can make, we, we can make that. No question. Uh, Man, I'm trying to think. Like we talked about the bosses. We talked about the arenas weapons. we talked about the weapons we talked about leveling up we talked about how cool they are we talked about the animals is there anything we missed oh uh i want to just say i think it's hilarious that you can eat a sandwich and grow really big like and go incredible hulk but i also think <laughs> growing really big and going incredible hulk uh seems a lot better on paper than it actually like when you actually do it it kind of sucks like i was like i don't i never use it i i maybe i'm just not very good but i was like i don't care for this i'm gonna stay i'm gonna stay little uh, and just stick to my skills. But I do like that ability a lot. Oh, that's my other complaint is uh, when you play multiplayer, it'll automatically use potions if you die. But if you're the last one left standing or you're playing single player, it won't automatically use your potions. And I don't fucking understand who made that decision and why that is the way it is. Fucking pisses me off. We died so many times online because one of us was the last one standing and forgot to use their potion before they died because they were waiting for it to auto use it because it does if there's other people standing. Fuck you. Bad decision. <laughs> that is, I don't, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get why they fucking decided that. Minor thing pisses me off because I've died too many times. I do like that you can bring your, your pals back by doing CPR though. That's, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. gold. Uh, what a fucking what a great charming little game. Do you think we ever get a sequel? You know what? It's been eighteen years or whatever. I don't think so. I don't either. And I fucking I mean I don't know. Maybe they just figure we've done everything we can do with it. I would love a sequel. A Castle Crashers two would be like top of my. I'd be so excited. I don't think it ever happens, but if it doesn't, I still have like thirty more nights to fucking level up. So I got lots to do. What a great little game. Um. Are we yeah, good? So the so yeah, the Behemoth tweeted in 2020 that they're not working on a sequel, oh. and everybody flamed them, being like, "Yeah, come on, why the fuck <laughs> not?" Like, ah, oh, fuck, whatever. You know what? I still I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a bold out of blank prediction right now by Sunday, December 18th, or whatever December 18th is in 2025, there will be a Castle Crasher sequel. Anyone listening yeah, to the show in the next three years? Call me out if I'm wrong. They'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get a number two. I'm just gonna. Call they're making out. an alien. They're making an alien hominoid uh, sequel. Yeah. So if they're doing that, they finish that, then they make Castle Crashers two, and then they just pretty. Yeah, and they cool. might. They might. That's because that's how their games came out. It was Alien Hominoid and then Castle Crashers. Yeah. So I'm locking it in by December 18th, 2025. We have Castle Crashers two. That's my prediction. Love um, it. Love it. 
All right, we got to score this fucking thing. Uh, so the scale we came up with was out of 360 because it was an Xbox 360 game first. And sure. uh, I love the Xbox 360. So I'll shut up. The floor is yours. Tyler, what are you scoring Castle Crashers out of 360? All 360. Nice. I love it. I, I don't give perfect scores in that it was a perfect game. I played. I probably played it for like four years, like you said, as comfort. Four yeah. or five years as comfort food. Like, till I upgraded from it at 360. I love it. It was a go-to. Oh, man. I think... Yeah, I mean, I gotta give it like a. I'll go, I'll go like three forty. It's good. I my only beef with it is, like I said, I wish there was a little bit more variety to the melee combat. And uh, oh, and you know what? And I don't give a fuck. This is a legitimate criticism. I maybe I wouldn't have dunked on it for this fucking back in two thousand and eight, but I can do this now. Where the fuck is crossplay? How the fuck am I on Switch in twenty twenty two, but I can't play it with anybody on anything else? I like I don't yeah, know if yeah. I you know I don't even know if I'm saying I'm taking a point off for that I it just pisses me off, um but no yeah fucking I love it what a what an out what outstanding outstanding fucking game and I knew I fucking knew you played it as soon as I knew it was covering Castle Crashers I texted <laughs> you I was like Tyler I've seen your art like you're you're a talented artist and I was like this did this game influence your art at all because it looks similar to some of the stuff you do. Um, I was already doing I was already doing a lot of similar stuff when this came out. I so not really influenced by, but uh, definitely like in the same vein. Yeah, of, you can like, see it. Yeah, for, and I'm not saying yeah, that you of, like copied or anything. Lots of my graffiti was already very similar to this because it's easy to do. Sure. It, yeah, but like in a cool way though. It fucking looks awesome. Um, all right. Well, we're done talking Castle Crashers. But in addition to stealing art from uh, Newgrounds. You you do other things. If people want to check out your other work, where can they check it out? Where can they find you? Um, so so we got a film up right now. Uh, I'm part of a studio that does uh, short films, short action films. Uh, it's uh, S762 on uh, YouTube. And our current film right now that's uh, circulating is Quiet and Able. It did pretty good in like the, uh, the indie film circuit. And yeah, we're just kind of still working on it. We got two more films that have been shot and we're editing and then we're working on doing a short film, like a little 10 minute thing this winter. And then we have a, a stalker film coming out. Uh, where we'll be filming in the fall or in the spring, pardon me. Um, that's based on like the stalker shadow of Chernobyl games. Oh, They're sick. like a first person shooter game uh, from the Ukraine. Yeah. So pretty pumped to work on those. We kind of put that on hold with everything going on in Ukraine right now. Cause sure. you're like, ah, you know. Yeah. Their new game got delayed because of what's going on over there. And, uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm really excited to play that game when it comes out. It looks awesome. Did you play any of the originals? No, I had never heard of it until oh, that man. new one got announced. And I was like, this looks fucking tight. Like I'm interested. It looks awesome. I can't for sure say this, but I feel like the first one was a huge influence into how fallout went from being a, a turn-based strategy game to a first person shoot. Oh, is that right? Eh? Cause a, I feel like it. Cause it was one of the first, like, First shooters like that, like it just felt very, I, it came out, I can't remember when it came out, but like Fallout came out years after and was very similar hmm. in feel and in the, just in like in mechanics and everything like that. The way you had items, sure. leveled up your character, stuff like that. So, Well, I'm interested. I, I know it's been delayed and obviously they have, they have, you know, uh, bigger problems right now than their fucking stupid video game. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, excited for that yeah. game. Pretty excited. And that sounds and, awesome. And, and, and that's why we delayed filming. We thought it was insensitive. To, Makes sense. No, to, it's that's yeah, cool. just with with things going on. But we do have other films out. Like Quiet and Able is really good. It's a you know a little bit into the future, kind of a not quite as cyberpunky as cyberpunk is, but like one of those steps towards that universe. Sure. You know, from our universe. Yeah. So. Awesome. Very. Well very cool. Yeah, and I'll make sure to throw description or uh, I'll I'll throw a link to that in the description of this very episode. So if you're interested, go awesome. to that description and check out Tyler's work. And uh yeah. buddy, I can't <laughs> on, our, on our hold on, on our YouTube, we have one guy who commented, "Oh man, this is the guy who take over in the Remember the Game." <laughs> <laughs> that warms my heart. That warms my heart. <laughs> Uh, buddy, I can't imagine I'm going to talk to you on the phone again in the next six days before Christmas, uh, cracks. So, uh, thank you for doing this and thanks for all the time you spent on this dumb podcast this year. 
And uh, I hope Santa's good to your it's good to you uh, you and the family, buddy. Thanks a lot for doing this. Hey, same. Likewise. Hey, Merry oh. Christmas. Do your fucking Christmas shopping. You have six days. Fucking <laughs> get off the phone and go, Walmart's open twenty four hours. Get to work. I'm I'm literally giving him this episode. That's what. That's oh it. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. Uh, <laughs> fuck. What a crappy gift. Uh, good stuff, buddy. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> Anytime. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Holmes, thank you so much for your generosity and for sponsoring this episode and for convincing me to play this fucking game. And Tyler, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to give me a call, explain Newgrounds to me, and talk more Castle Crashers um, and why you love it so much. I appreciate all of you that uh, are listening to this episode. I appreciate both of you guys for taking time to talk to me. Don't forget to check out Tyler's movie work. You can find it in the description of this episode. Tell him I sent you. And uh, I think I'm going to get out of here. I think this has been a long episode with a lot of crashing of castles, and I'm time to, uh, I'm ready to move on. What a great game. I'll be playing this game for, for fucking months, I think. It'll be one that I just randomly pick up and do a run-through with a new knight to see what magic they have and stuff like that. If you've never played it, I'm telling you, it's on everything. It is so much fun. You can play with the kids, with your spouse that doesn't play video games very much. It's just it's just a really, really fun time. So check it out. Uh, yeah, and that is going to do it. I'll be back tomorrow for all of our patrons with the uh, Expansion Pass 142, which will be our third annual airing of Gaming Grievances as part of our Festivus celebrations. I'll be back on Friday with Game Patch, where I talk about all the biggest news in the world, video games. And then it's Christmas. So I hope you all have a great Christmas. Be safe. Have fun spend some time with your families play some video games all eat a bunch of food do all those things you're supposed to do during the holidays and we'll be back next week with the final remember the game of 2022 episode 229 where mark McHugh and i talk portal cannot fucking wait thanks a lot everybody talk to you later i'm gonna thank some patrons and leave cheers goodbye Remember the Game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not puke up all the content I churn out every week without all of your support. The following people are at the Senior Executive Vice President level or higher at patreon.com slash rememberthegame, and as such, I am contractually obligated to say their name as quickly as possible at the end of every episode. So a huge thank you to... Makeshift Mallow, Magic Money, Joe Buck, Sharonic, Andre, Amanda Hug and Kiss, King Bahamut, Dave McGee, DNA Gaming, Slick Rick, Doug Doran, Chris Flurry, Chris Flurry. Fuck. I, last week I did so good. This week I got 10 names in. Charlie Medeiros, Andrew Wright, Jordan, Fraser Burns, Angry Ticks, Dave Thompson, No One Cares, Aaron Lawson, Nathan Trombley, A Town, Morgan, Zane Donovan, Ryan Kinchin, Mike Maloney, G9 PSX, Mercury869, Wolfgang Darren, Sam Wright, Andy Hudson, Doogie, Wolf Magic21, Johnny CCDC, Joel LeBlanc, Squints, Titan420, Zonko504, Russell Aldridge, Jeff Bergeron, Captain N, OT Plays Games, Too Tired for Life, Tunable Power, John Woodruff, Randy Barrage, Just a Fish, DP Pooper, Denzalo, Holmes, Zach Shepard, Chris Dickin, Matthew D'Amico, Frosty Feet 492, Triple, Chugger 22, Elijah Burns, Stephen Parnell, Ray Sam Wontonga, DBXJ, Jameer Williams, Steve Dalk, Phil McCracken, Mizuru, Nicholas Chaffee, David Marcus, Phil Lencher, Ruben Elizald, Eric James, Jake Carter, Laces Out Dan, C Spin, Thomas Smith, Ian Keg, Nicola, Munch Makuchi, Leroy Westrich, Jerry the 3D Printed Sostrich, Russell, Evolva, Sean Ramos, DB Cooper, Stud Still Smash, Mojo the Helper Monkey, Brant Hewitt, Gabe, Dan Fuselman, Fuzzy99, Decoy Man, John Jameson, Wyatt the Surgeon Row, Blaine the Hoagie Man, Scary Terry, Bucky the Beagle Herder, Edridge FPV, Hago Waffle, High Plains Drifter, k Jimothy, Joe Stone, Chris Williams, Oroku Saki's Gardener, Nicole Novak, Cody Richardson, General Fury, Dem Boys on the Roof, Current Remember the Game Hall of Famer Mark McHugh, James Juan Francesco, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Matt Hamilton, Nomad, Daniel Devour, Devore? Ah, fuck. I second guess myself. Now I'm falling apart. James Black. Drugs are bad. Okay. Sam Carpenter. Nerdy Hybrid. Adam Fletcher. Colin Bollinger. Sleeper Hit. Joey Mercury. Theorand. Squeak Nuts. Isaias. Timmy the Exuberant Turtle. Brian Neese. Christian Gabriel. Maverick Marty. Musty Beetle. Bud Lightyear. Phil Vow. John M. Watkins. Beef Dingleberry. Hitchy Poo. Arctic Vision. Bulma Simp. Mark But Not McHugh. Trevor McKee. Quiet Place Queen. Cam Nelly 23. Zamatos. Skillerooney. Lugnut. Oh my God. It froze. Bobby Litton. Brandon DeZeba. Kia Pup. Works for me. James Senna 
Bria, Derek Cox, Dakota Guy, Alexander Camps, Ryan Perry, Alex R, It's the Bigfoot, Graham, Itchy Nutsaru, Mr. Papa Giorgio, John Drew, Solomon Soto, Darth Skywalter, Denton Van Zandt, Postman, West Gen, Nick Creature, Hatrick Swayze, Adam Martinet, Naf E, Dr. Nightmare 23, Tone Bone Swiss, Kevin Monroe, The Stone Shooter, Shorzy, Digital Dave, Lord Longrod, Von Hugendong II, Max Sainton, Alexis Ramos, Faded Suffrage, Tristan Anderson, Benjamin Atkins, Robbie DLC, Ryan Maurice, Hired Goons, who? And Brandon Heimheckel. Helmheckel. Uh, that was, I've done worse than that one. That wasn't bad. Thanks a lot, everybody. You're the best. Merry Christmas. Purple Monkey Dishwasher.